Hezbollah has confirmed its leader, Hassan Nasrallah, was killed in an Israeli airstrike on the Lebanese militant group's headquarters in Beirut. Now, the group, which Australia designates as a terrorist organisation, has vowed to continue, quote, confronting the enemy with hostilities threatening to escalate to a broader regional conflict. Our Europe correspondent Catherine Diss is in Jerusalem and our North America Bureau Chief Jade McMillan is in Washington monitoring global reaction to the news. The situation on the ground here is tense. The fighting has been intensifying on both sides, rockets flying across the border um, on both sides of this conflict. Israel continuing to target Dahia, which is the suburb in Beirut south, and also the Bekaa Valley trying to now target, it says, weapons which it claims are buried in bunkers deep beneath residential areas in Beirut and across Lebanon and on the the other side, we're seeing retaliatory fire coming from Lebanon. They're trying to strike deeper into Israel to try and hit Israel's second largest city, Tel Aviv, which sent air raid sirens droning across the city today. Uh, but so far, uh, it seems that Israel's Iron Dome aerial defence system has managed to intercept most of those missiles, so the damage is minimal. Let's take a listen to what some residents in Beirut have had to say after being displaced by the latest fighting. We cannot go back home. Our homes have been destroyed, all gone. What else can I say? We heard from people living in our area and who are still evacuating that airstrikes are heavy. They are dropping missiles, they are burning buildings, they cannot rescue injured people nor retrieve martyrs from the ground. They are bombing one area after another. And Fazia, we've heard from a whole gamut of senior leaders within the Israeli government today who have said that Israel is continuing to stay the course that it is determined to eliminate Hezbollah's threat to not just its people, the country, but also to the world. We also heard from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who spoke in a late night address. He said that he, Israel has settled the score, that this is a historic turning point and will change the balance of power in the Middle East. He also said that Nasrallah wasn't a terrorist, he was the terrorist. And by by killing him, it means that they will be able to return Israelis safely to the north of the country. Nasrallah was not another terrorist. He was the terrorist. He was the axis of the axis, the central engine of Iran's axis of evil. He and his people were the architects of the plan to destroy Israel. Now, Catherine, we know that Hassan Nasrallah is a longtime leader of the terrorist um, organization, of course. So w where does Hezbollah go from here now? And is there a possibility that we could actually see a broader regional war? Yeah, look, um, Fazia, there's, there's no doubt that this is a major victory for Israel and a significant blow for Hezbollah. This will weaken its leadership and also its organisation. It's important to note that over the past couple of months, Israel has managed to take out an entire generation of Hezbollah leadership, this last strike, getting the man at the very top of the organisation. So this is likely to cause a vacuum of power. Um, it is likely to cause unrest within the organisation, Lebanon, but perhaps more broadly across the region as it tries to find who can possibly replace those members that they have lost. It's uh, it, it, over the course of three decades at the helm of Hezbollah Nasrallah has managed to build it into a formidable fighting force, both politically and militarily in Lebanon, but also the Middle East more broadly with the backing of Iran. So as to what happens from here, there are significant fears that this could lead to a broader regional conflict. The question now is whether or not Iran decides to retaliate or intervene. We heard from its supreme leader today who has announced five days of mourning and urged the Muslim community 
community to get behind Lebanon and Hezbollah. We don't yet know what it will do. There are a few scenarios that could play out. It could retaliate on its own or we could see some of its um, other militias across the region known as the, the axis of resistance countries like Iraq, Ye Yemen and also Syria um, intervening and, and weighing in and this becoming a more broad, a broader regional conflict. But at this point in time, it's just too soon to tell.